Uh, that Navi's was from my previous test from earlier today. Uh, back to our draft screen. Uh, Gyrocopter from Team Empire. It's weird because I was actually having a, a semi-debate with Wangamama about this just last night. Talking about like the new heroes to come out. And both Gyro and Wiz together was one of the things Ten that he flagged. Remaining. And I'm, I'm still not sold by it. Five because your flank cannon you basically expend in no time whatsoever. So your continuous damage during the fight is very, very minimal. Reserve and time. your control is a call down. And you're going to try and use a call control down up against a Storm Spirit and a Weaver. Not really going to be that effective. Because you get your high movement speed coming out from Weep. Or you can just time lapse out the damage. Now Dying there was a bigger buff to, team M uh, to the Gyrocopter. And that was with the Rocket. But even then... It's, you're able, uh, you, know, you can't actually evade it, because you can't evade a rocket. Uh, but you are capable of doing some, um, some nice elusive kind of play, and you should be able to Ten get around Ten seconds it. remaining. Alright, so Tide Under is now going to be the final ban out here by Puppy. So he's just like, he's really worried about remaining. the possibility of Team Empire's control. Yeah. And that's probably all it comes down to. We, we turn this Navi's into like a, a Wisp buffing up the gyro, so he actually does rack out some damage. At the same time, I still would prefer to Luna, because uh, then they could just push through, keep her alive, and everything would be hunky-dory uh, to the very, very end. All right, thank you very much to Joel. So it looks like um, our uh, Stradoodler, uh is must be wrong. Because uh, it seems like he said, Thank you for your tweet, my, my tweet. Maybe. So the stream works, the TV sound works, and you are still awesome. Yeah! Woohoo! Ah, <laughs> oh, I get classed as awesome. I'm feeling so focused in Dota. I don't know, there's something about being in this house Reserve that makes me just sit here and go, You know what? Everything can start working together. Skyrath Dire Mage comes in from Navi as the final one. And this is what makes your aggro tri lane. And this is where I get really scared as a fan of both of these teams, but actually more of late of Team Empire. I would look at this and say, Okay, now Team. Empire, they've got themselves some some really decent team fight and some decent lanes, but Navi can run aggro tribe with the axe, the tree, and the sky wrath mage. You've got double slows into a call with high Ten amounts of damage as remaining. well as range harassment. This can come from both sky wrath with his very cheap orb Five nuke as remaining. well as axe with his battle hunger. And they can then dive under the towers with the tree and protect her. Like, I, Le Leech Seed's the main thing. Time. Living armor, they can't do that until the later portion of the game, but it's fine. And that's going to buy a space for Revolt. Team Empire remaining. missing the offlane the hero right now, and it has to be a hero that can deal with Five the Weaver. Pucked remaining. up against the Storm Spirit, that's obvious as anything. And Team Jesus. Empire, they can't go aggressive with anything else. So they run a Nyx Assassin, which... At the end of the day. Carapus is not going to be the thing, which I'm looking for, even though it's the first thing that came out of my mouth. Uh, Mana Burn uh, from Nyx Assassin. He's got to restrict the Weaver's movements as, as far as Shikuchi goes. If he's capable of doing that, and I set up hotkeys, yes, I set up hotkeys as well. Ha 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 ha. Sorry, if, for people out there that don't understand, actually, let me finish my point about Nyx Assassin first. You get the Mana Burn off on Weaver, and then you won't have this really fast maneuverability anywhere you want to go. Uh, that's. Because you, you, you lose your mana Prepare for Shikuchi. It's battle. already quite an expensive ability at 234 um, mana pool. And he's going to be casting 60 mana for every single time. You're not going to be able to stay on the front lines the entire time. And maybe that's the reason why they're switching up their lanes a little bit here. Now, Funic, yeah, he can go bottom lane and go up against the next assassin. That's perfect for Funic. He doesn't need mana. Um, like... He could at least harass about with some battle hunger, but that's not the be all end all of Alakazam. By the way, Kuro's set looks so freaking sweet. I, sh I saw these wings. These wings were in, um, in I think Drassel set or something like that. Either way, they're the uh, the Cloud Forge great wings. They look so damn boss. I love it. I love this guy Wrath Mage set. Oh, let's bring the camera back up again. All right, so leave some aggressive wars behind. And what I want to see, yeah, yeah, Funix already, way, got to get used to Draskal setup. So Funix is going to head down towards the bottom lane, which means he gets to go one-on-one -on -one with, whoa, have they actually managed to dodge this as well? Should check out all my lanes before I start talking about this, Jazz. Silence going to be running on the off lane with support from Vanscott. Now, they brought a ward here, so at least they can stop the pull points. But because they're forced or forced to this off lane, with both Puppy as well as Koro, they got a lot of control from just the two supports here, Navi, that they could probably the easily begins. pick off Mac. Dendi will be, of course, the mid up against Resolution. There was never any question about that. They would never change that, those lanes up. Uh, but always want to fly. He's got to stay so close. Now, there's an observer from both Dyer as well as Radiant watching the maneuverability of these supports up, uh, up towards the top lane. So because of this, yeah.
It's uh. Oh man, these these lanes are gonna be so. I want to see if this Navi lane is actually capable of first blood. Because if it is, this bottom lane has severe problems. At the same time, Axe kind of already has severe problems. He went uh, for spin to start with because he thought he was up against the Nyx. And that's not who he got. He got exactly the opposite of what he wanted, which was both Vanscore as well as uh, as well as the Gyro. And now Vanscore, he can stick around here and just lease his experience. He doesn't have to back up at all. That creep goes down. Okay, he's actually in range for the experience anyway. Yeah, and funny, it's going to be really just annoying him. Now, Vanscore shows himself. This is probably one of the other reasons why he was trying to keep his distance from Funnick. Is because if there is a spin, he cops damage, which makes his neglect, like, not a hundred, no, anywhere near 100% worth it. What he is able to do is just make sure that Funnick knows he's being watched at all times. And because of that, you've got Silent having all the space he wants on this bottom lane. Can be very happy about that. Now, Puppy's moving towards middle lane. They can't gank up resolution properly because phase shift and orb makes it impossible, but Puppy can at least help to try and zone out resolution. Problem is, these creep waves are on the wrong side of the river, so resolution, he's already getting his next points of experience. More importantly for him, the bottle charges have to be coming up for resolution, and at this point, he's not going to get that quickly. Going for the early nod talisman just delays it up a little bit more. And uh, Jenny did exactly the same thing, so the implications of it is minimal to nothing. We do have a support rotation though, and that's because obviously Puppy was coming through middle lane. His intention wasn't to gank up resolution. His intention was to come down the bottom lane, make sure they ensure, ensure rune control, and he actually adds a presence to the bottom lane. Because Vanscore, he would... Okay, with the TD rune as well, he would love if he could just swing into Vanscore three, four times, because then it's a kill. But Vanscore tethers up. Now, they're a long way down here, allowing for the possibility for the Rocket Barrage to find he's copying a lot of damage here. Tries to move back into the tree line. He can't play with the Fog of War because Vanskull's holding back a long way and Silence Deeper inside the lane. So there's nowhere massively safe Stop. for him to hide. Also, is that a, that's, Okay, that's the Radiant Sentry Ward. Just trying to work it out from here. I, actually, can I, can I do that? Yeah, I think I can do that. Yeah, we're, we're going to perspective. We have, we have this little Sentry Ward here. Which belongs actually to the dire side. Okay, so that's the real. I'm like, look at that going. What if it was radiant, then Kuro will be dewarding right now. That's the same little quirky little guys have always want to fly. So he's going to come out here and finish the job. But Kuro does not want to let him do it. <laughs> it's, he refuses to give up this ward. Always want to fly. There's one other way he can do it, which means coming into the Alpha Wolf camp, but it's going to take damage to do such a thing. And quite a decent amount, especially if he misses up the hill like that one. And then, okay, not like that one, has to heal up. That's the only way he could do the D ward out. <laughs> That's just frustrating. That's wasting the, I'm not going to say it's wasting the time of, uh, of uh, one support more than the other. Is there still battle for rune control? Oh, resolution being picked up. Sky Wrath. Yeah, he got the seal with the first level with the orb to fly out. Then he needs a little bit more damage than the last attack. The phase shift from Batak misses too. Resolution phase shift three seconds. He's trying to do a small jaunt, but it's not fast enough. And that is that insanely cheap orb. And I'm not saying because it got the kill, but it's the uh, it's the arcane bolt. There's only 70 man to throw the damn thing. Going for the point up in steel before he went for the point up in concussive shot is just so smart to try and gank up against resolution. He's having a bit of a hard time on bottom lane, but that living armor is still kicking in for him. Puppy's only level 2 at the moment. He really needs to find some experience from somewhere else. Like that victory on mid lane is a big victory. It stops resolution really going into something bigger. Like you think towards treads, you think towards having his uh, his blink dagger up and running, for example. Like all these kind of things. But resolution won't be able to fold these things for a little bit longer now with that death to his name. Because it took a little bit longer uh, for the kill to come. So it meant actually a little bit more. While up on top lane, Mag, uh, he went boots first. We haven't seen uh, that blink dagger. Well, I know we're only four or five minutes in. He could rush it if he wants to. One thing I'm waiting for is actually, I, okay. Forced. I thought he was going to do this at the start, and this is something I kind of wanted to share because it's very uh, envy-ish uh, to say it, but we might have to wait a little bit longer. With a smoke kick to bottom lane, they've got a seal vein score. 
maybe even... Okay, let's go on Sun. Concussive shot, the seal will go there, and funny got the call off. Got himself a spin, so some decent damage there. And Vanscore, he's already used Tether, so with both Concussive as well as the Orb coming out. Ah, oh, there's going to be dangerous to dive in this far. Funnick needs some spins right now, or at least some living armor. We've got more Orbs coming out from Kuro. TP supports coming in, and he tethers back down again, but the call still went out by Funnick. He got the spin, but the Shallow Grave protecting him. Funnick, he wants one last at Kuro. He tried to throw out the Orb too, but the Shallow Grave just lasted long enough. A pity. Puck can come in, finish up the Sky Wrath Major. Na'Vi, they went so deep under that Tier 1 tower that they gave Empire all the advantage, which they've worked so hard to build up to now. Straight back again. And I'm sure Puppy, the captain, was just like, I'm not going in there, boys. Living armor from range, but there is no Leech Seed to help you in such a scenario. The fact that he also gave the experience a resolution, then he's back on par again with resolution again. So now we've got the level 6, like the dream call is available for resolution. So he's got the potential for the stuns to come out. Mag had more space as well, going arcane boost, so he can keep Radiant's up with that mana burn over to a Vorst, or should attack. be doing so anyway. Making sure that he can't Shikuchi and Time Monk, which means the Vorst can't go over aggressive on Mag. Speaking of aggressive, with Tether coming to the bottom lane, but what a time to do it. They leave an aggressive Observer Ward behind. Like they're gonna find something double stack on the side and resolution takes most of it. But they don't find anybody because the rest of Navi rotated in towards the middle lane. So they got four people pretty close here. It's like they're waiting for the, for the initiation to come in from the next assassin. So then they can go for counter initiation. So Kuro hangs in the tree line, Denny's on the front lines. At this point, always on a fly is not involved, and Mag hasn't left the top lane. So there's no gang to come out here. So they just push Sun back down towards the bottom lane. They couldn't find anyone close by inside the jungle. Which means Funny has to get back to that bottom lane. Did he just do another stack? Yeah, he did. And he pinged out the fact too that his stack was taken. And with the Observer Ward down right now from Team Empire, they're watching these stacks so closely that the fact that Funny like, wants to get some burst yeah. farm in there to get his Blink Dagger up and running, it's going to take way too much time. I was going to find a couple of bit of harassment here from a Vorst by Carapus for Vorst. Only just on the edge of that, not being caught out. Dandy's looking for a jump on resolution. He's gonna be a little bit closer. Actually, that's oh, that's almost close enough. He only needs to hold resolution to position long enough for Kuro to get that seal off. With the uh, three percent, the, the three seconds up, it may be enough. It may be enough then. Radiance top tower is under attack. How's that bottom lane looking, Funic? Just chilling, relaxing. Our couriers, why are they sending down right now? Braces and Wraith Bands. So that's all for the Gyro Copper with the Ring of Aquila. There's your middle lane resolution gank up. Able to face shift at that last point. And Shella Grey for the lead seat. He's gonna try and drag it out from actually always on a fly. But the Dream Call catching three euros underneath the tower. Now Wisp has already picked up the axe in this scenario, but always on a fly. Then he just keeps jumping in. He wants to kill on resolution, but resolution jumped down in front of the Rosh pit. Now Funny died underneath the T1 tower. One jump and attack face shift to get Denny with the Cedar He only needed one attack in, but resolution. This is why, man. I I love watching. I love watching resolution play. He's so quick. Dyer's middle tower is and accurate attack. at the same time. A rare combination to get, but also two things which you must have if you're going to be one of the best mid solo players in the world. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. But now he finishes up his treads, he's got his bottle up and running. The next stage is the blink dagger. He realizes he needs the strength treads as well. That's the reason why I mentioned the treads before, because you look at this lineup and you go, there's a lot of damage which can come our way very, very quickly. So having the option just to switch up and get more strength straight away is worth it. And then you can still have your extra intelligence if required. Also, I don't know why those announcements are appearing. I turned all of that crap off. If it keeps going off, I'll turn it off completely. Problem when you go for a new setup. There's always something which you miss. Always something. Mid gank, signs of resolution, and now, well... I don't think you're escaping from this one, man. Phase shift, grave again, really? Spike Carapus with the double stun and the Dream Call drop down. Kuro and Denny, they're locked here for now. Skywrath may drop to the middle of it. The Living Armor was basically protecting Denny. They made the choice, protect him in solo. Now with relocate. so Jaro's gonna come in with this one too. Call down is available. Look at that movement speed. They just keep up with him so easily. Call down to the side of the horse, runs into it. He's hit by the second shell, and now time lapse is out. 
He fed himself in the middle of five heroes and wants to keep fighting. The TP's out base, that's just with a relocate as well. Mag, spy cameras available. The orb's gonna fly in, which is gonna stop over on Kuro and Resolution. He's orbed up again. Another arcane orb and the seal. Puppy so low on life with a flat cannon hitting Resolution. Phase shifting again. This damage coming out from Navi and Funny. He's trying to chase down Vanscom, but he cannot get close enough. I end your life. Whisper's the only casualty of war now. Sans gonna mop up the rest of it. It's a triple kill. Empire on an absolute spree. Now Dendi, he's got the choice. Does he jump over? Havorce, he's actually just waiting prey! He's behind the tier one tower. Havorce finds himself in the perfect position, but now he's in a horrible position. Shikuchi away three life points. Dendi has been distraction on the hill. He jumps back up again. He's got Vortex and another jump. They've got the kill over on the gyro. Vanscore and Mag, they're moving down right now. They're looking over towards Dendi. Can he reach him in time to get this done? That's why Vanscore is like, movement speed, Dyer's I've given you everything I've got, Cap! Funnick, Sentry Ward down. If Mag stuck around a little bit longer, he could have got the call off and dragged him back outside that Vendetta. And then they'll be looking for a collateral kill. But the kills are going back and forward right now between Empire as well as Navi. Over and towards that middle lane, Mag. Well, now even Koro. They're trying to give him space to crack his level 6. They need that Skywrath Mage ultimate. Dyer's bottom tower it's just the major controller. Attack. I already talked about something like a Lich Ultimate coming in for Na'Vi, but they didn't have that option because they banned the hero themselves in the force selection. But when Wisp brings in a tethered hero, and you can get that Skywrath Mage ulti off, and you hold them there, they come together and the ulti dropped right on top of the tethered units who arrive. That's the kind of damage which you just can't buy. Resolution sealed, and then we'll pop. No help, maybe there is. With a relocate, but Kuro's backing up. Now the cooldown's gonna drop, but Kuro's out of range of it, so he doesn't get slowed by this. And Dendi, he's sitting on the edge. Four seconds left, Kuro into the corner. He has level six, but he actually didn't level up his ultimate there. He maybe could have dropped Radiance it on the tree line. Tower is under attack. They're gonna find Sans, and Olog is still losing down. And a force, well, he's gonna come a little bit of flat cannon damage and the rocket barrage damage too, but Sans, he's gonna bug up on him. And there's more support, Mag, he's looking for the stun. Havorce just time lapses out. With four heroes up on that high ground, it was the right decision as well. It was overextending himself a pretty penny. Funnick, where is this blink dagger? He's gonna see resolution in mid. The top lane's where they're looking for the kill. Chikuchi again by a force. Living armor still protecting him, so Mag didn't want to attack him straight away when he had that on. But this vendetta hasn't really been able to be used aggressively, but then again, that's actually not. That was actually an invis room by Mag, so I take it back. His vendetta is still off cooldown. When a force to puppy realize. They go do something about this top. The hilarious thing is, too, nothing is being done about bottom. Only now is resolution going, wait, if I need my blink dagger farm, I can just move bottom lane for it. Now they don't want to be down there because they don't have the tier one tower. They can't jump any support in quickly enough. So they gotta deal with that now. Avorce is gonna try and have a crack and always wanna fly. Even if you can just bait out the shallow grave, it's worth it. Now right. always gonna fly, Shikuchi again, Mag, Spy Carapus, tried a little bit of a blind attack. search for it, but the observer ward saw him coming in. So Avorce had all the pre-time needed. Well, Dendi as well as Kuro again, attacking through the T1 tower. Really not the greatest of uh, town pushes in this lineup for uh, for Navi. But they're looking better as far as uh, the late game goes, because they've got Sans, there's a lot of state of building now. Mag does this, blinks in, stun, mana burn, moving armor again though. Protects Dendi, they've got one more jump up the hill, and they can't keep up with that. Everything was thrown out by Empire, well at least from Silence as well as Mag, apart from Vendetta to try and find these kills. And now they found themselves with five heroes in the middle lane. Or I should say four heroes, because Resolution's on bottom. Dyer's top so Resolution gonna solo this one? Yep, really okay. Dyer's it's not really solo. Funny. he needs to spin hard. He needs to spin so hard right now. He already got the call off, so the armor's protecting him a little bit longer. But the recall did go out. Now, where are these kids coming back to? One second. He's back underneath the tier one tower in mid. Bottom tower is under attack. So a good kill there for Empire. They made sure Funnick is initiation attack. isn't there, but they haven't Radiant shut down Storm for anywhere near enough in my mind. But the double non tower, but it definitely looks like Dendi is not feeling too secure in what he's doing. Or at least for now, just realizes he just needs that little bit of extra mana Radiant's in these fights and survivability until a boss can come online. A boss, I love this from you, man. He's skipping the Lincoln Sphere and going into a BKB. Because Lincoln's in this game isn't going to help him. He needs to be able to fight and move quite freely during the team fights, especially up against that. Like Nyx Assassin, Spike Carapace, Dyer's when the Dream Call triggers off, the cooldown's going to be the only thing that will, will affect him because of the slow. Under attack. That's the only thing that will, will stop a Vorst during a fight. And he's got his maneuverability from Dandy on top of that. 
So Navi still have a lot to play around with. That's why I'm still trying to completely fully understand Silence maneuver here. Because the cooldowns obviously are gonna be a great thing, but if that's your only disabled off controller weaver when you have to rely on silence. But silence doesn't do wasn't doing anything when you get the PKB. So no, there's nothing resolution can do until it gets inside the vice. And Mag, initial stun before BKB will be nice, but he's the only one with that stun. You're not gonna get the you're not gonna get the stun off and then follow up with a rocket from Gyrocopter, especially considering Gyrocopter hasn't even put a single point up with the rocket. So Silence playing this exactly the way he played his, uh, his uh, Gyros of old. But that was back in the days when Flat Cannon was a little bit stronger. Um, as well as like when everyone was like, hey, team fights for the win. Now with this Navi lineup, they can isolate certain targets. They won't get isolated themselves. Havors is, is really the scariest thing of all. Like, if, if the Eva has an Aegis of the Immortal, I don't see Empire being able to take any fights just because he can freely move everywhere. And Resolution, he can't go aside the Vice right away. You might think, hey, he's got 1900 gold, but he needs his Blink Dagger because he needs to be able to jump in and stop the Skyrath Mage from doing his shizzle. That's going to be a very, very difficult ask. Dyer's middle to jump in and get a silence after on Koro. This is a guy who has, like, like support reflexes. We see it time Dyer's and time again with Ruby Telekinesis. And you're probably going to see it with the Sky Wrath Mage as well. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Silent looks like he's just going to... Yasha to start with, with drums. He's definitely built for team fighting right now. So it'll probably just be the standard mana style, but at the same time, he should also be considering a BKB. So going like a casual Yasha here, and then going into the BKB may be the best choice for him. Funnick with a Blink Dagger and they're smoked up. The TP is on the way, and that's going to be Dendi. So he's got a long way to jump north if he wants to try and catch him out. Let's go in the tree line, Silent back, but there's no T1 tower, and the Observer was noticed they are still running up late, and now they got Silent. Sorry, quick all flying out. They find Vanscourt, Leech Seed out. But Dendi, he's too far away. He's farming up. If he was there right then, they could have jumped straight on top of Vanscore. Now with Wisp relocating. Wait, are they going bottom? They're going bottom. They're searching for a force. The silence, he actually was able to time lift it out. Shikuchi, no two seconds, it's too long. So they get the kill, and the pings are coming up saying, yo guys, up here, I'm sure of it. And Poppy, he's right. The two of them are there, throws out the tree ulti, and this is the time to jump in. At the same time, Koro, he managed to find Max. So they kill off the Nyx Assassin to start with, and now they can move up to Silence. Bleach Seed goes up on him. Shallow Grave is still available from Always Wanna Fly. Then he still refuses to jump. He is currently, obviously, he jumped out to kill off Mag. So it ends up being a one-for-one -one trade. So technically, the two offlaners for either side, because the Force is playing the third role in this game. Radiance Funny bottom jump tower again. is under attack. Silence there, and there's a big creep wave around him. It's for spins are high. And the BKBs arrived on a Vorse, so they They may just still want to wait a little bit longer until they have Desolated, but if they can still keep finding pickoffs, they should go for it. In fact, Funnick wants to. With the help of Puppy, ah, he's going to go Radiant's too deep in event score. He'll attack. just tether in and help him out, and always going to fly still in the neighborhood, so they're not going to find anything there. But this does feel like distraction for the moment. I guess just put Havorst on the bottom lane, let him farm up, let him have free time, let him get let him get high levels, make sure there's like a zero mana cost for his time lapse. So Nyx Assassin can also do nothing to him. Then again, they don't have enough mana burn to get through all of his mana to stop it so he cannot time lapse. That's just not possible. Not with their lineup. If they had Necro Book Heroes, that may be possible. He's silent for now too. He's going in for the Mithril Hammer. He's realizing his DPS really isn't enough for these engagements. So he needs to have a little bit more of that DPS, but he still needs the BKB. So he just goes the DPS item to start with. We're coming from a Vorst. Chikuchi underneath the Observer Ward. And then walks back down again. Now Mag, he's got Vendetta up. He could attack him and then hit, but they need to Wisp Relocate to work with this if they want to kill off Havorst right now. And even then, Havorst, quick on the Shikuchi, and I don't think there's, there's, uh, there's a Sentry Ward from Mag, but you want him to Vendetta, throw a stun, and get a Sentry Ward all down at the same time. You could always just try the stun straight away through the Sentry Ward, but then you don't have your burst damage and your stun duration just wears off. Now, resolution, there's your Skyrath Mage ulti. Shallow Grave, it doesn't protect you from the Axe Dunk. And this is where always in a fly, even though he's really, really effective in the early stages of this game, he really starts to drop off in his effectiveness. He was screwing around with a lot of the earlier ganks, but 
Sonic. Able to just drop that Quelling Blade, getting up with the levels two, and sitting just over 2,000 gold short of having his Aghanim's upgrade. At the same time, Silent is still trying to get to that BKB. Surprised he didn't fly the Mithril Hammer out to himself at this point, because they need everything they can get out of that flak. And Puff's coming up in eight seconds time, and Na'Vi, they may realize they don't need forces. In fact, the pings attack. come out and say, let's just push T1 Tower bottom, or at least someone. The Creep Waves, they're doing it right now. And with the TP support coming in, Illusion Rune on bottom, Mag, if he steals that he's dead. Oh, <laughs> I suppose he's still got Vendetta. In fact, he took it. I thought there'd be... Actually, where is your detection from Na'Vi? It's not even existing. Now, Sentry Ward's over on Poppy, but... He's back in the middle lane, so they're not ready to fight up against this next assassin. You know, I don't think they care. There's enough life points over on almost every hero from Na'Vi, and then the protection of living armor as well, that the chance of Nyx assassin getting a solo pick-off is negligible. But doing some scouting to get that kind of pick-off, that'll work. So Axe goes down, the boss is in the neighborhood, and now Storm's group, where's he jumping in? They found another one. Puck's already down the side of the only just managed to respawn. They throw the orbs over to Mag, and he just holds over the top. It's the immunity that makes, that makes it work. And Vanskar and Silent will have towards the top lane, but they just lost Funic for the price of both Resolution as well as Mag. The two cores for the one. Don't want to call him the high carry, because he was on that lane. Um, but two cores for the price of one core is the easiest way of putting that. Radiance they're not the kind of trade they're searching attack. for. So they're looking for some extra collateral, and that's the T1 town, the top lane. We're going to lose some in-game audio sounds for a moment as I just double-check and make sure everything's still working right. And it looks like, uh, yeah, everything's still good on the live stream. Now, funny. Oh, look at that. Gets a perfect call in silence. There's no BKB up, and he's not sure the money for it. With the battle hunger, the movement speed's gonna be through the roof. He goes into the Rocket Barrage, but there's cooldowns and then bomb. Funny. There's just parts of choppers flying everywhere. We get 22 minutes in with 26 kills. And what do we got from Danny? A full BKB. Empire just lost control. Come on, we say it was just the weakness at the start of this draft where they just, like their initiation and control isn't enough. With the BKBs up, then he can just trigger his BKB now. He drags back the resolution into the Puppy ultimate as well. It's a nice thing to at least over on Puppy, and he has to leave him alone. Puppy has to be the sacrificial lamb here. He tries, oh wait, 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 wait! He takes the stun, no, 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 he couldn't run away from that. With both Orb as well as Puck Orb, he wasn't surviving that. But they got through the 10 second BKB of Dendi. But that was also a five man gank to try and kill off what they all got, which was just a tree. That's all they really got from that. But actually, I think they got something more. Yeah, they got the money for Silence BKB. It was Puck that got the kill, of course. But that's the time. You put the tree and protect protector on the, on the bottom, on, out, out of the game, so attack. you don't have any kind of living armor, which when he kind of spawns, probably instantly goes, whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit that, uh, which will probably just put her into a Vorst. But yeah, here it is. Because the force is rather deep under the tower. He's a little bit low on life, but he wants to be over aggressive. Because they got Funic waiting for the jump in. Now there's an Observe Ward that's also watching. Actually, no resolution in this room. He's coming up behind him. Is there Gemma? Is there Sentries? There's Sentries, but okay. Now Smoke got revealed. So it's just like someone is around here. Resolution wouldn't know that because they're up on the high ground when the smoke blew off. So the call, the stun, Mag hit it perfectly. The Whispery Lake is going to come in. Koro, living armor, turns for the ult. He's at least able to get it off right now. And the bugs are coming in from Vorst. He's going to focus always on the flight at the back end. Axe, they need him. There's no Dun for Funic. He's locked up in the in the, uh, in the river right now. So they just had to wait on the Shellogram to get the kill. Vorst BKB's already gone. Tree Oldie will hold Mag in position. And then he just jumps straight over the top of him. The cooldown's trying to be an extra controller. The Vorst already got a double kill though. They do bring down Pumpy again with three for two trade. But a Vorst will time lapse out every bit of the damage, and he still wants Van score. The Dream Call is holding him here for the gym and attack and the extra hit. Triple kill for a Vorst. This is where you wonder, where is the control on the Weaver? It doesn't exist. There's nothing there. And now he's also building into a Lincoln Sphere. A force, he is, he is completely cottoned on to the massive fault in the Team Empire's draft. And that is the lack of control over him. If Puck does actually get to that side of the vice now, he's also going to have to get through a Lincoln Sphere. And a force, okay. Living armor. The rocket's coming off right now too. It's going to hit on a force anyway. Um, and Silent had a bug on him, so he couldn't actually stick around and try and make the most out of that rocket. It was like a space-making one. And Dual Scepter is the choice by resolution. Hmm. Drops his Null to pick up the Dual. 
Mitras to see if that's just a bring fun account. Oh, he got the call. Skyrath, the ulti. Oh, resolution. He uses himself up. He does a lot of blind points. Bay shift. Wait for the blink. He goes for the silence and the orb is sent. And then they bring in the extra help. The relocate to make sure they punish Funic. The Skyrath ulti down to and the seal. Now he wants to go stick around and do anything more with that. But at least reveals the fact the Yule Scepter is there for resolution. They get themselves the kill on Funic. Into a smoke with both mag as well as resolution. Pink's coming out to go over towards the ancient area. Navi, they are dragging the experience back up again. It did, did really feel like from the very, very start that it was uh, no, uh, Team Empire, the, the ones in control of this game. That was just because that's the timing of the heroes. Weaver takes longer to come online, especially even longer now he's going into a Lincoln Sphere. Attack. And Empire need to capitalize on that. They need to keep finding kills and they found one. Puppy already. So, Silence, looking for the stun, fading it right, resolution. Oh wow, the stun went on Dendi from Mag, and now he turns into Puppy. Puppy will go down, the Weaver will also have its effect. Dendi, he's gonna get himself out of here, big MB or not, but more slow on life. Time is back up to his full life, three euros down for Na'Vi. They've got Ag still up and running, but Funnick running is exactly the word. Resolution put himself in the trees, where it's not the place he wanted to be. But they follow into the damage coming in on, on top of uh, on top of Funnick. It's a triple kill for Silent. A boss is under these sentry wards. The BKB is down. He's got a rocket on his tail as well. Takes underneath the tower. There's a blink to a silence, which would be possible for Resolution with the BKB down. They could find themselves with potential kills, but the rest of Empire is too busy taking the tier one tower. They accept fate and they move Radiance back. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Now Wisp with the Mech Empire. Their team fight's getting stronger and stronger as time goes on. Maybe I was also... I guess... I, okay, my, my point still stands true. That Horvost, he's able to freely move during these fights. Team Empire have very little control over him at all. So in the later portion of the game, Nothing is really going to change there. Uh, he picks up a scythe of vice uh, on Puck, but with the yield, uh, it's all pretty much delayed. Uh, all Empire can do is hunt the supports, which is what they're doing now. Like Puppy, Silence, can't get three ulti off. Mag's here with the mana burn, but they, the Wiz takes the kill with the balls. It's just simple pickoffs. That's all they have to search for. In the later portion of the game, once the damage healing arm finally arrives in for a force, I assume that's his full Lincolns now. Yes, it is. Radiance I think it's his MKB up or his attack. Desolator, depending on what choice he goes for. DPS is going to make is going to be more effective in the fight because right now he survives through the fight, but he doesn't bring an end to the fight early enough that his supports are capable of living. Like Funic as well as himself were the ones to survive through all of that, and they're probably the tankiest ones on the lineup. Like with a point booster and an ogre club, not to mention the base stats of Axe. Should have been enough. Oh, we heard that. In fact, he saw the aggro being pulled by the creep wave so, uh, from, from the creep camp. So Funic, he wants to jump on resolution. That's going to be a difficult kill to get, but at least he can zone him out of the bottom lane. I think he might be concerned he would die himself with a Wisp Relocate. How long have we got? 10 seconds for Vanskill before that's up again. Funic may not know the exact timing of it. But he doesn't have to take the risk until the puck backs up. Which, he did. Resolution ended up going up towards the top lane instead. The force of the man having a peek. So I can't believe that tier 1 tower for Navi is still alive. Then again, with the tree, it's kind of understandable, but at the same time, <laughs> it's... Dyer's middle tower a is team under empire attack. with all these team fights and they still struggle to take a tier one tower which means they can't just jump in for Rosham. Even though they feel pretty confident there with both call down as well as Dream Coil and, and Weave. Like they'd have to feel pretty damn confident. That team fight's already been pretty damn good. But I need more than that. This observer was not gonna last long. Yep, in fact Sarn just hits it once and gets rid of it. But the flat can turned on. A Vorse, Lincoln Spear's already gonna trigger. That's the rocket from Silent being used for that one. Something level one, so who gives a crap? Who's up on top lane? Alright, no, it's just the Storm Illusions currently farming up there. The rest of them are trying to hold in the middle lane. We're looking at us at a 5v5 engagement about to come up. Koro. Is he really gonna yeah, he's going in for Aghanim Scepter upgrade? Times for him. Radiant's bottom tower is under Avorced. attack. They keep giving him this time. A Vost will have his damage healing item, and now Empire, they are going to try and go in for Roshan. 
They still hold the advantage. Front line a little bit now with a little bit of a style max bit. Gonna give a crack at Roshan. Move pretty quickly too. Navi's not ready. The Vorse is throw the bugs out basically right now. And now here they come. So they're gonna launch up, and she only gets on silent though, so they don't have to get too many, uh, too many bugs down. Lincoln's Sphere already triggered on her Vorse, that's the Observe Ward up on the high ground. Yep, instantly gets pinked out with a gem over on Dendi. Now Empire actually go blind over in this region. So they send out the Gyro Illusion. Have a little bit of a peek. Curran just tries to orbit straight away. Who have they managed to find? Silent, that's the real one coming out. And a Vorse is staring at Roshan with only 4.5k life points, probably considering, can I do this? And the answer is no. If you had a Desolator, the answer could be yes. It doesn't have the damage for it, so Navi can make the best choice ever and just push mid. There's no pressure on them whatsoever to try and take Roshan. They know in the late game they've got this, and it's Empire that need the better advantage. So they're coming up right now, the Observer Ward's watching Silent move in, and now, well... Okay, is that Sentry or Jam? It's the Jam from Puck, so everyone gets to go blind. And of course, he's not the initiator. Dendi and uh, Funic are the initiators right now for Navi. You've got a blink deck and a call, nice. But Dendi, it's a blink deck, it's a jump into a, a drag back. There's no Scythe of Vice up on him, in, and that is what he's building in towards. But he also needs that. They need, to, they need to stop this gyro before he can pop his own BKB and Banner style. So the Scythe of Vice is the only way to do that. Orcus just wouldn't be enough. But we go to the more late game focus item. Stun's still flying around, but this mid tier 2 tower is just being harassed down bit by bit. And it's not as though Empire have living armor to regenerate their towers and their heroes in the front lines. That mid tower is still actually needing some, some living armor, but considering a Vorse on the front lines, Puppy just keeps giving it to him. We have ourselves a bit of a Mexican standoff, which is what Empire do not want to have happen, which is why they send both Wisp as well as Jarry to the bottom lane. The two heroes that don't need to be involved in the fight at all times. Because Orzga, Nane, and uh, yes, your name is on the stream. Um, all that I basically need to do has is uh, just tether and relocate back into the fight. And they'll be there. The problem is if the fight goes on a little bit longer, the Wisp disappears. And then Jaira loses his buff, or he has to take the Jaira with him. So if they're going to come in, it's going to be a hit and run manoeuvre from Team Empire. That's the only other way around. Like Sans and a Forced, not enough, because if, if, if there's a follow up to it, he just BKBs. That's just sim that simple. Navi really need to take some more map control. They're, they're starting to get stalemated up right now. Like Empire keep taking advantage Dyer's because they're still farming up the jar at the bottom. Attack. And Navi just keep committing so many resources towards that middle lane to try and force a fight that they just can't do it. So they're going to take this tier, one, this tier 2 tower up on the top. And now, Empire going for Rosha. Take down the 4.5k, but this is also the reason why Navi didn't want to go up north. Because they realize Dyer's the timing of it is really bad. So Bugs coming again. This time the angle's better. So it hits on top of the puck and Resolution is able to blink himself away. And Avorst, well, he wants to go in, but now Roshan's at 3k life points, and he'll try and finish this one. They give him Urn Charges, they give him Living Armor, but the Weave comes out from the Dazzle. And Avorst, he's not going to be happy with this. He's losing too much armor too quickly. Now the Sun, oh, the Wofton! Now he triggers up the BKB, attacking always on a fly to start with. They're trying to sort, actually turn him out. They got silent. The BKB will trigger. Funnick comes in. He can't call anybody. Even the Magus right next to him. Dendi, he's got three core heroes around him. He drags Resolution back. And now Vanscore, where well, he relocated up on top of the hill. Well, they can't attack him, man. That's one upside. But the downside is he can't move anywhere from there. He's stuck up on top of the cliff face. And Dendi, too late to find him. Rocket's coming down for a force. Funnick is still down here. He can blink and turn into this one. Through all of that fight, it was only pumping in mag that went down. Now Resolution's gonna have another crank. Colt goes on fighting with the silence too. He's gonna try and TP himself out, but there's enough damage from Sans to get the kill. And Avors keeps just tossing out these bugs looking for a kill. But he can't find anything, so uh, Denny forces the mid a little bit. No max, oh, okay, well I say there's no advantage really gained until you check out the fact that Funic just bought himself back into the game. They do not want to let this Roshan go. And here we go again. He's gonna jump, he's gonna jump now. If he doesn't jump now, he doesn't have to take us the immortal. There's your jump, but it's already too late. It was a short range jump to go into a random, and the bugs are from force. BKB is off, Denny, pulling back, always on a fly, and that's gonna drop down, and they got him too. The Dream Coil is all available to actually be part of this fight, of force. He doesn't have time left, he's fuels up towards the air. This is buying him time to get that Shikuchi back off cooldown, but the orb is still just working for resolution. Vance, oh, for force. 
He runs back in to try and kill off Vanscore, but can't finish the job. So Empire take Aegis, they take Roshan, they hold the Aegis, and they got themselves more BKB charges and more kills against Na'Vi. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. The big armor is trying to protect this mid tower, but it won't be enough. The only upside right now for Na'Vi is that an Empire don't have tower clearing. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Silence not too shabby, considering his farm Radiant's so far. That's not the greatest way to get through, but when you get a creep wave like that and the catapult behind you, you're not going to be sad about it. Are fortified. Now we lose a fight, Korshan, Aegis, and now also two towers. Oh, then he jumps up, BKB. The Skyrath Mage ulti, but all got ways of resolution staying inside that level 4 phase shift Radiant's for middle maximum tower duration. They take the tier 2 tower unscathed. And they also got another BKB charge out. Denny's down to 4 seconds on this BKB. Worst situation for him. His immunity is just gone during the fights. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Hoppy was trying to keep these lanes split pushed in some kind of way. Jumps in, Viz, and then bails out again. Receptor on Vance Gore, silent. 3,900 gold. Okay, now is this gonna be... Like, Weaver is not gonna go into a, into a butterfly right now. He's either gonna be deadless, or he says, Well, I got Aegis, so I may as well go in for the Rapier. That's the choices right now. That's the only real choices right now. What do we got? 4.4k gold. So much money on silent. You can sell the drums next, unless you're gonna wait for something else to wear off. Oh, hello, time lapse out by Havorth. Running himself away from resolution. Team Empire will take tier 2. They're really kicking back in this game, even though they were the ones who controlled it from the very, very start. They continue to do so. Oh, I just, I just felt like there was more that a Vorse could do, but he just never found the double dam that, that damage really got him. Top tower is under attack. And question marks about that Lincoln Sphere, but either way, the situation they're in now, he is still very, very, very survivable during these fights. It's just, can they deal with the amount of farm that Sarton has? He's 24,000, 23,000 net worth. Up against the highest on Radiant, which is 14, 8, 15k. The upside is 5.5k that hasn't been spent on anything. So it's just a buyback, it's all he's really got. And now Navi, they're gonna try and force the issue. Rockets are flying after Funny. I'll just have to take Dyer's that stun, but that's gonna put his blink tank on the cooldown for three seconds, but then again, he's stunned for the same amount of time, so it doesn't really matter. And Living Armor protects the towers for now. Asylum, he's staying on there. Radiance top tower is under attack. Wants to soak up abilities. Radiance top tower has fallen. Diego C. Mortal coming in through the rear. Havorst looking for another wave of the, of the bugs. Radiance top barracks. He could do this. Attack. Finds a way to fly Radiance in the back end. The bugs do go out and they trigger the BKB. The same time, he jumps in and they got the pull off on Vanscore. Of all people, they're trying to focus down this twist, but the ghost is protected for now. Now Havorst comes back in for the fight. Putting so low on life. He just wants to duck. He tried it, but it was just too far away from the threshold. With a double kill beside the follow-ups under a boss, he may be survivable, Radiance but it's too late now. And it's just too late. The top racks will go down, and this will either be a mid racks. Radiance top barracks has fallen. Now it's gonna be a mid racks. I know if Navi are in the position of calling out the GG, because they probably still there's still some level of fight in them. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Who are they really gonna shut down? They Radiance still don't have that side to fight over on the fallen. storm spirit. And there goes Jamili. They go into the range as well. They're stunning to Dendi. It's just been a beautiful play by Empire. Maybe I'm gonna have to give more more uh, merit to what I'm saying as far as that gyrocopter being a big hero now. 9.2k gold on the gyro. The world is its oyster for whatever he wants to buy. What if I could, but I can't, so I won't. So I'm not bad. And there it is. And Puppy makes the right decision here. There's no way they can come back in this. Right now, the gyro is going to obliterate them at every Dyer single turn. Victory. And Avorst 
He can't get enough farm fast enough to bring in the DPS to the engagement. Surviving is one thing. Winning a fight's another. So Team Empire, they go 1-0 here. And they're looking good to secure themselves that top spot. Now Na'Vi, they must win the next game.